If you visit an old European church today, you might look up and see the dusty remnant of a Baroque organ's pipes. But in their day, these organs were on the cutting edge of mechanical, mathematical, and scientific technology. They operated on wind power with bellows, operated either by a player's feet for a small organ, or in the case of big organs, by huge bellows in a neighboring chamber, activated by a bellows boy who would run up and down compressing them. Michael, if Bach or Walter or Buxtehude walked in and saw this organ, what would these people think? What would they recognize and what would be new to them? Well, I think they'd, they'd recognize it, first of all, as, as an organ. I mean, we have the three manuals, the three keyboards on which Bach himself played at his, his home organ um, in, in the uh, Thomaskirche. Um, we have the pedal keyboard. But a lot of things have also changed with, with electricity and with the advent of um, you know, mechanization. You know, this organ is run entirely by electricity. This console, which I play, is controlling the pipes here in the large instrument um, by electrical impulses and electromagnets, which would open up underneath the pipes. They still build organs in the old way that Bach would have been familiar with. But for example, this, this console at which I sit could be moved uh, anywhere in this, in this organ loft because it's only attached by electrical wires. Bach would have never have known that. You know. He would recognize the stops, the sounds. He would, of course, uh, also recognize even things like a, a draw knob that would pull on and, and take off voices. But the, the electronics and the mechanics have changed considerably since that time. No candles, dripping wax on no the No candles, keyboards. dripping wax. He'd like that part probably, <laughs> yes. Air conditioning, you know, exactly. all these things. And all these buttons that you can preset your combinations, right? So Absolutely. Bob would not have known these. These are preset combinations. I can, I can press a button and see stops move. You know, all these things done by electromagnets and um, Bach would have known none of that, of course. So who would have done it back then? Would he have had assistance? He would have had assistance. Um, uh, of course, at that point in time, they also had people pumping the bellows just to get air in the instrument itself. So, um, you know, he would have assistance on each side, pulling stops, helping with things. And sometimes he would have done it himself. Um, music nowadays is a lot more advanced as far as the registration goes. So one person can do it all, but in those days it was simpler. They wouldn't have all the different sound changes. They would just have a sound and they would go with it if he were doing it himself, for example. Exactly. What, is some, what are some of the crazy sounds on this organ or colorful, in your opinion, or most exciting? Do you have favorites? Well, I do. I mean, uh, the full organ sound is obviously something which we're, we're used to hearing. People associate that with the church or with this sort of thing, but you can also imitate a lot of other instruments. Um, some of the symphony orchestra, a flute. Um, there's an oboe sound that it's not too bad. There's also some other older instruments like the cromhorn from from way back in the we day. Hear that? Yeah, it just it's it's it's, it's a riot. <laughs> so we have a whole variety of things at our fingertips to try to get these different sound palettes that they would have had. And that's part of the art of playing an organ, is it not, especially today where the possibilities are so large? Almost endless. And in fact, you know, every organ is different. I mean, no two organs are built alike, so you have to have a lot of training and just knowledge. What if I pull a stop, what kind of sound will I get? And, and you just have to approach every instrument differently. Well, a pipe organ is made up of a lot of different kinds of pipes. You have everything from very small pipes to the very largest pipes you see here on our instrument, the big copper ones that go 16 and sometimes even 32 feet tall. But um, basically there's two, two different types of pipes. The first is the traditional pipe, which basically it works like a whistle. Um, you have air coming in one end, you have a, a point at which the, the, the air column starts vibrating, and then you have the length of the pipe which determines the, the pitch. And so I'll, I'll show you. You sound like an organ. <laughs> yeah, exactly right there. And there's many, many of these, of course, in an organ. We'd have thousands in this instrument right here. The second kind of pipe is designed to imitate the, the orchestral reed instruments, such as an oboe or clarion or that sort of thing. And it looks a little bit different. It looks more like a trumpet or that sort of thing. 
but within this body right here, within the boot, there's a vibrating reed which goes back and forth. And uh, at some point, it sets the, the column to vibrating. And then you have the resonator, which also is kind of like a, like a trumpet bell, for example. And so you have a very different sound from this one. So it takes different kinds of pipes to make an organ work. You have flue pipes and reed pipes. But together, they make for all the wonderful sounds we hear. These louvers right here are part of what we call a swell box or swell shades. They open and close to help provide uh, dynamic control, volume basically, for the organist to decide whether he wants the sounds to be muffled when the shades are closed, or when the shades are open, the sound would come right out and you'd have a louder sound. So it's the way that we as musicians and organists can have more control over the volume and, and the dynamics of the music. Organs clearly were one of the era's most sophisticated machines. And all of this technology reminds us of the rapid development in acoustical science in the 17th and 18th centuries, advances that directly affected the building of instruments. I think one of the interesting things about, about playing the organ is we actually have uh, manuals and keyboards we play with our feet. So anything that I can play with my hands, I can play with my feet. It takes a lot of athleticism and coordination, but it pays off in the end. <laughs>